I thought we'd start right out of the gate today with something. You know how I, I've told you guys several times that sometimes it's the it, it sometimes it's the thumbnail that makes me laugh. Sometimes, uh, you know, when when somebody puts up a, a video, usually Mark Levin, that he's really heavy handed with it. Occasionally, Don Jr. will overdo it with the sort of gaudy crap. Uh, on his, you know, and, <laughs> um, but occasionally it's simply the title. And I, I saw this one and I was just like, oh, oh no, oh no, this has to be old or something. This has to be, this can't be recent. Um, the, the, the lovely Candace, ladies and gentlemen, um, hilariously and without irony of any sort, it would seem, I'm not going to. Should I tell you who the guest is before I... She's interviewing someone. Someone that uh, most of us would have a hard time interviewing without laughing our asses off. Especially if we look down at the cards given to us by our producer to ask these questions of this person. And the question on everyone's mind is, there it is, look at that, look at that, oh God. Will Eric Trump run for president? And I just, I have to say, <laughs> I have to say, oh, uh, oh my God. Yes, please, yeah, yeah, go for it. I'm not gonna donate, uh, obviously, but I, I you know, I'll support you in the primary. I'll I'll make my own Magoo hat and uh, and <laughs> you know so that Magoo. I can have a hat uh, and and help him run. I mean, come on, yes, please, please do, please, 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 please run for please. I mean, when when they toyed with the idea of Ivanka doing it in sort of a Kardashian way, there were some people like, well, uh, uh, there might be something to that. And I think it's fascinating that Candace apparently wasn't on that bus, skipped right over Don Jr. and went straight to the Eric Trump question. Oh, my God. I, I, I mean, I have to see where this goes. I want to see his serious consideration. What would be his policy consideration? How would uh, his uh, presidency and candidacy be different from his dad's and yet more of the same in the best ways? How would he make America Trump again? Um, how could he make America great over and over? Magoo! Uh-huh. Um, this is, uh, God, I can't. Yeah, Eric, Eric Trump reveals to Candace Owens whether or not he wants to get into politics and what that would look like. Um, I have a, a general idea of what it would look like. It would look like a combination of a show and shit. Like if you put those two concepts together and you had shit and show, it would be a shit show. <laughs> oh boy. All right. I, I'm, let's, I'm excited. Let's go a future in politics yeah. for you. I know that Laura, they were like really wanting her to run down North Carolina. She's from North Carolina. Have you mm -hmm. ever thought about getting into politics? You guys seem to have the fortitude. You seem to uh, not give a fuck, which is necessary. Like a, you have very little, if any, concern for the people around you. And yet you can pretend to be kind of like a, like a uh, tent revival preacher who's just uh, you know, screwing his way across the Southland. Oh, you are obviously experienced with it. I can't imagine anything could be a curveball after what you've gone through. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, it, you, you don't actually think he had anything to do with the presidency while he was in there. Like, of all, let me let me explain this to you. Mike Lindell, Lynn Wood, and Sidney Powell spent more time in the White House than Don Jr. and Eric. Good God. I think would be a curveball. For me, probably not. Never rule anything out, but probably not. Um, Laura was doing amazing. I mean, in all the poll, and she made the decision not to go for Senate in North Carolina, but there are places. Yeah, she made the, the decision. Uh, I mean, in many ways, based on the polling. Uh, 
you know, polls were she was at 61 percent in an eight-way race and you know I, I mean i think she would have walked into that seat i really do and mm. um you know there's a lot of different and then and and yet nothing no 61 percent in an eight-way race why would you turn that down you could be a sitting senator i i, I could it could it be <laughs> that uh that was a uh like an internal Rasmussen BS poll that was floating. All right, never so mind. That, first of all, mm -hmm. we've seen the game, and the game isn't all that much fun, right? It's rewarding because you can accomplish great things. Um, but it yeah, but you know, you can accomplish great things, but fuck the people. It's just too much of a hassle. I mean, it's a situation where you can affect more lives as a single human being uh, on, of of people on the planet than any other singular role that exists in the world today, being president of the United States. Not that you would if you were a Trump, but you could. And, you know, you could do that. You could get in there and, and, and like, s really make changes in the world that would better people's lives. But... Yeah, yeah, they want to see your taxes. The weaponization of the systems, right? Well, again, I mentioned the Washington Post story, right? Within 12 minutes, they were already trying to impeach my father. Like, that's the system. You, you do realize the Washington Post can't impeach anyone? All right. The system doesn't give the person who actually run, wants to run for politics, you know, for great reason. My father put aside billions of dollars. Mm. Um, by how? By investing in a casino? He put aside billions of dollars. Oh, right. It, it, that he never had, right. Billions and billions of dollars for this. Oh, billions and billions of dollars. So we're talking about multiple billions of dollars that he doesn't have. Great work, Eric. He's the first candidate ever to fund his own campaigns. Uh, bullshit. Right. The toll it had on us as a family was probably very different than many others. We're the first family that probably came out of Washington exponentially worse than when we got in, right? It's amazing. Yes, uh, yes, your, your dad is a colossal fuck up. And even though he was born on third base and lived his life convinced he had hit a triple, he manages to fuck up everything. He fucked up, he got his dad's company and he fucked that up. He got a TV show and he fucked that up. He literally was running for president as a stunt to try and keep The Apprentice on the air because it was the only thing keeping his his uh, his creditors at bay. And then he became president of the United States and fucked that up. Because we just turned down a lot of things during that period of time. By the way, don't cry for us, right? You look at Obama, he oh, goes yeah. in there as a civil servant. Now he's buying houses in Martha's Vineyard for $30 million, right? I mean, it's yeah, based on book sales. Now, I mean, granted, his books have a, a lot fewer pictures in them. And as the first black president of the United States, he might have an outsized audience for those books as far as who's going to buy them and have a copy of them and go, I, this is amazing that I can own a book written by the first black president of the United States. Even if they people don't read them, they're going to be proud to have them on their bookshelf. Unlike... Your, the journey together, which is going to have, uh, you know, the, like the pages are going to be stuck together. Be interesting how that works. You know, the system doesn't reward people that want to go in that are incredibly competent to do a great job. But how would you know? How would you have any idea? The system rewards crooks who. Oh, does it now? How? Early you know, nurse off of the American people for their entire lives, never accomplish anything. The system rewards those people. And so. Do, seriously. <laughs> Does it, is that your person? They understand folks. This is his perception of how the system works. That everybody else, Reagan, Clinton, the Bushes, Obama, uh, obviously Biden now, even after he's been, uh, Ford, Carter, they're all just like sort of welfare queens after their presidencies. And meanwhile, um, this guy, it, like his, he believes his father was the only honest man. And this is how the system treats you. It chews you up and spits you out. Do I want to do it? 
I don't know. I'm a real estate guy. I'm a bricks and mortars guy. Um, I love this country. He's a bricks and mortars guy. But no, no, she's not asking you what's between your ears. She wants to know what you do for a living because a lot of us are confused. Um, and no, you're not a brick and mortar. And by the way, it's brick and mortar, not bricks and mortar. We get that it's brick plural, but you can't shorten it. Never mind. Love red, white, and blue. I'll fight like hell for this country. Except in the military or any kind of uh, public service. I'll fight like hell for this country. I'm not going to run for office. I'm not going to serve in... I'm not going to get elected to office and, and write and pass bills that better people's lives. I'll fight like hell for it, you know, from the outside. Uh, you know, I, I'll be on the front lines of charity fraud. <laughs> if my father decides to do it again in 2024, you better believe I will be the first person to stand by his side and... Well, third. Because <laughs> And not because you wouldn't want to. I'm sure you'll be the first person to go up, stand by his side, and then it'll go, move over, Eric. Don and Ivanka are standing here. Jared, push Don out of the way. You know, and go to war. Um, I still do that every single day right now um, as we get... <clears throat> yeah, he's going to go to war. I don't... Is he... Is this live from Ukraine? Is he just going over there to fight for democracy? Yeah, I'm going so that American soldiers don't have to. Act, but... Whether or not I want to step into that arena, I don't know, time will tell, but it's, uh, we've seen a really amazing world. A lot of it's not the greatest world, um, but we've seen a very, very interesting world, and I think it's taught us a tremendous amount. It, 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 it's taught you that it's not worth it? All right. So much for fighting like hell. So the United States, just so you know, uh, Eric thinks the United States isn't worth public service. All right. I hope you're enjoying this conversation with. No, I'm not. Um, and this is an ad, I guess. Yeah. For gold. Of course she's selling gold because gold is real money because pretty rocks are, are you know, classic. You know, a nice malleable, you know, metal that you can form into pretty things and go, ooh, look, shiny, is way better than an economic system based on productivity and products and innovation and creativity and resources. Why would you want to base your economy on that when you can make pretty rock, smash a pretty rock? Oh, God. It's dumb when Tom Hartman does it. It's dumb when Candace Owens does it. Enough of this bullshit. Gold. This to 989898 to get your free info kit today. Unless they're mailing me some free pretty rock, I'm not interested. So let me ask you um, a question. because So basically, that would be a natural process if it, if it came. You're not saying no, you're not. Yeah, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying yes. I'm not saying up. I'm not saying down. I'm not saying in. I'm not saying out. I'm saying, uh, what was the question? Never. Um, but what I want to ask you about, though, when we talk about these crooks and the establishment, this is something that has always confused me. Yes, and Eric will end that confusion, honestly. I, I do not understand your family's support of the RNC. Okay. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Thank you for bringing this up. F go after the, the rhinos, man. The swamp is no worse than the RNC, man, and the, and the Republican Senate Committee. Oh, my God. The Republicans are terrible. Please explain to everybody watching Candace how shitty Republicans are. And we'll all just sit here and watch. I asked this question because I think a lot of conservatives have this question. Because, yeah. you know, there are obviously good people in the RNC, but I don't know that they have been yeah. supportive of you or, or yeah. whether or not they have just earned money after the fact. You know what I mean? I don't. N no. A, Eric is the son of a president. What kind of royal family bullshit uh, revolutionary war redux nonsense is this? And secondly, support Eric? the RNC is seen as conservatives. Is that a part of the establishment? Is it is the RNC very different from the DNC? Like what is Oh my god. The fact that she thinks he has the answer to this. Uh What's oh, your perspective God. on that? What is it? I think there's a lot of good people in the RNC. Um I think in the political yeah. spectrum there's always somebody who's trying to yeah. you know milk off of others, right? No. But enough about 45books.com. I think the fact that my father wears the R, it means that anybody who's affiliated with R is going to try and extract anything they possibly can mm -hmm. out of that person. I think that's natural. Is it nice? Um, hey, there's a bunch of senators out there who, you know, 
aren't great. Wait a minute. So anybody, because your dad is, wears an R because he's a Republican, it's natural for other Republicans to try to milk off of him. By the way, this is the second like, like teat reference he's done. Is that just me, or does that seem like a fixation? <laughs> Welcome to Freudian Slips. I'm your host, Candace Owens. Um, who campaign off my father every single day, even though they know that my father doesn't like him, right? Mm. You know, you could name all of the ones that I'm thinking about right now. No, she can't, fucko. Don't try. This is the same thing his dad does. Look at his face right now. Name somebody in the Republican Party. I have no fucking clue. Tell me which ones the bad ones are. I, n I can't keep any of this straight. They won't be supportive. They won't do this and that. But when it's time to actually go out there and campaign, they know my father has, you know, 98% of the Republican base or whatever it may be. No, he does not. 34% of the Republicans don't even want him to run again next time. The Republicans are fighting about the fact that he is siphoning money away. And by the way, if you're a maggot or you're a Trumper watching this and you're a big fan of this dude and you think he's the natural, this, this is the Jeb in your future. So, I, I mean, I don't know why you're here. Why aren't you at drafteric.org right now? <laughs> um, but at, at no point it, in the... in in you know, I don't even know why you're here, actually. I think you should probably be at his site giving the money because that's the thing. Like, that, I'm not, inter I don't want to interfere with that in any way. I don't want to slow you down. I want you to go over there and sign up for it to siphon cash out of your bank account daily, twice it on Trump's birthday, and uh, so that he can run again and so that no other Republican candidates have any fundraising ability over the next year except Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates. in which case, you know, you might as well just throw it in a chip or shredder. He'll go try and raise some money off of his name. And, you know, welcome to Washington, D.C., right? That is Washington. Uh, there are a lot of good... Asshole, these people are spread out all over the country. What do you mean, welcome to Washington? They're trying to get to Washington. That's why they're trying to fundraise off his name for in red states with red voters. What do you mean, welcome to Washington? Well... Um, at the RNC, that much I can say. Um, are there probably rhinos over there? Yeah, I'm sure there are plenty of rhinos associated with as well. Uh, did they yeah, do some probably. really good things, um, have a great ground game and other things that would be very, very hard for a campaign to set up, especially a campaign where we didn't know what the hell we were doing. I mean, we didn't know what an eye <laughs> Yes, we know. That was true when you actually were in office. Uh, thanks, honey, Sarah. Caucus was. I joke about this all the time, but I remember going to... Iowa caucuses, and I look at this little campaign staffer, and I go, like, what are we doing here? Well, sir, you're <laughs> I, I, I believe he says that in every room he walks into. A speech in front of 5,000 people in a, you know, gymnasium, and tell them why, you know, your father is better than they are, and I go, who's they? And, well, Jeb Bush is going to speak right next to you, and Ted Cruz is going to, and I'm saying there, it's like, these people know something about the world of politics. I know nothing about the world of politics. Well, I'm glad they're interviewing you, and I'm glad Candace is asking you questions about the RNC and how they're different from the DNC. It's, I don't even know how she managed to get this interview. I guess she was just in New York and by the office, and she'd already interviewed Don, and, and you were hanging around going, you want to interview me too? And, and Trump said, I, yeah, I have to get him one interview a year. Right, and Lord. So we, weren't, we didn't have the capacity to create ground game. We didn't have the capacity to, you know, and so... Um, I so you, oh, so you sucked off the teat of the RNC to stay afloat. You were ignorant of even the process of elections. And if the RNC hadn't carried your dad's testicles across the finish line, you never would have made it. And therefore you owe your entire political existence and your experience to those people who knew what the fuck they were doing. Had a very big role. Thanks for joining me. That's it. Well, it's plenty. I got to be honest. That, I mean, what? what? <laughs> she and, and by the way, that was the whole interview that they posted. I think it's uh, I think that's all he could come up with. What what else are you going to ask? Literally, by the second question, she asks him. Uh, he's like, I don't know what I, I don't even know what's going on. You're like, OK, that's a wrap. That, we're <laughs> we're done here. Oh, my God.